These new business class seats bring Lufthansa up to the bare minimum modern standard and not one step beyond. This 787 Dreamliner could be their new flagship business class product, but they just don't treat it that way. Today we're flying this brand new Dreamliner from Montreal, Canada to Frankfurt, Germany. The flight time is just under 7 hours. I paid for this trip myself and I filmed without permission or involvement from Lufthansa. That way you get an authentic, independent and non-sponsored travel review today on Marcus Travels. Welcome to Montreal International Airport. We just finished check-in at the Lufthansa business class counter right there behind me. The lady working the desk was super nice and gave a very nice first impression on this flight over to Frankfurt on the 787 Dreamliner. Montreal Trudeau International Airport is your typical North American miserable airport. It is overcrowded, it has low ceilings, and it's a space where you don't want to spend any more time than necessary. One benefit though is that you don't have to walk a lot. The check-in counters are right after the door. The Uber app even asked me which airline I'm flying, and when I entered Lufthansa, they dropped me off right outside the Lufthansa counters. For luggage, Nina checked three suitcases, and I checked the main compartment of my beloved Osprey backpack, and I kept the day pack as hand luggage. After landing in Frankfurt, we would have a train connection to Basel, Switzerland. The bags were checked in, depending on who you asked, either to Frankfurt Airport, Frankfurt Airport train station, Zurich Airport, or to Misrak Gashamo in eastern Ethiopia. I will link to the full video at the end of this one, because our trip would end up being a complete disaster after landing. Now let's go through security, I think it's right here behind me, and then we're gonna make our way to the Maple Leaf Lounge. Security was a breeze, I think we spent maybe 10 minutes in the queue, I didn't see a priority line, but when the normal security line is that short, that is a really good experience. Well done, Montreal. After security, there was a passport control gate, and that would bring us to the international part of the terminal. There, the terminal does open up with a bit more space and light. We had access to the Air Canada Maple Leaf Lounge. At the entrance, they display this Aircraft Canada, just like they do in other Maple Leaf lounges, and I just like it. Welcome to the Maple Leaf Lounge here at Montreal Airport. We'll come back to the nice features of this Maple Leaf Lounge, but let's start with the basics. There is a respectable cold buffet, as well as some hot items. There are fresh juices, lots of other drinks as well. There's a coffee station, of course, as well as some additional snacks. And here's the part that I like in particular. Here they have numerous hot items, but as you can see, the lids are turned away from the aisle. Behind there, there is actually a person serving you, and all the different dishes that are available are on display here. There's many different kinds of seating available in this lounge, some of them with more privacy than others. We chose to sit here in the very back of the lounge next to the all-important coffee machine. This lounge offers excellent views of the airfield below. The Maple Leaf Lounge here in Montreal definitely gives a better first impression than the one that I visited last in Toronto. Although that was the domestic terminal lounge. I got myself a nice glass of kava here from the manually served bar. I got myself a nice glass of kava here from the staffed bar. Cheers. What actually is the opposite of a self-service bar? Whatever it is, they have it. However, the staff were not very knowledgeable about mixed drinks. I tried to order a Peruvian classic drink, the Pisco Sour, but the person behind the bar did not know what that was. Also, the person next to me was having problems with getting the right drink. What he wanted was a type of martini where the glass was merely rinsed with vermouth and not mixed into the shaker. But the staff was not familiar with the lingo that he was using. I would certainly recommend that Air Canada improve the training of their bar staff. From the hot meals counter, I got myself a poutine, a real Canadian classic. It was delicious, and this will become important later when we talk about the Lufthansa catering. The poutine was delicious. Now let's head to the gates where the 787 is going to take us over to Frankfurt. The Lufthansa 787 business class is laid out in a reverse herringbone structure with seats in the 1 to 1 configuration. That means that each seat in the cabin has direct aisle access, a game changer for Lufthansa. 
The seat is the Super Diamond model from Collins Aerospace. My seat is 5 Alpha and Nina is behind me in 6 Alpha. Both of these are window seats. Welcome aboard the Lufthansa 787 that's going to take us from here in Montreal over to Frankfurt in Germany. There is no first class cabin on this aircraft, so the business class cabin goes all the way to the front. There is one limitation in my seat, 5 Alpha, namely that it is missing one of the two windows that everybody else gets. Let's check out some of the privacy features of this seat. So if I turn around like this, and I'm going to check myself on the monitor here, I can basically only see the screen, the in-flight entertainment screen of one other person on that side. And if I turn around all the way to this side, there's only the window. So I would say that this seat does offer a really good level of privacy. This is the Super Diamond seat here in business class on the 787 on Lufthansa. We'll do a more extensive seat tour once we're airborne. The service starts with a welcome drink on the ground. I pick the champagne. This seat sure is great, especially for Lufthansa, but we also had many problems on this flight, and they start with this dirty, nasty, disgusting pillow that they gave me. Clearly, it had been used before. I asked the cabin crew member to swap it out, and I did get a new one, but this was not a great first impression. And we haven't even left the ground yet. An incredibly generic safety video plays, and we are ready for takeoff. Lufthansa is known for its worst-in-class business class product. On every other wide body in their fleet, this includes window seats where you have to climb over your neighbor to get to the aisle. On this new 787, every seat does have direct aisle access, but that was not by Lufthansa's design. This aircraft was go to Hainan Airlines instead, and Lufthansa, when they took it over, decided to keep the cabin interior. That was a good choice. But that seems to be very temporary. The cabin crew member told me that Lufthansa will not keep this aircraft. Instead, it will go to Austrian Airlines, which is also part of the Lufthansa group. The reason, as she put it, is that this aircraft doesn't have the right seat design or the right color scheme. It's such a pity that Lufthansa won't keep the aircraft because these seats are excellent. On my left, there is a big countertop with two compartments. In the front compartment, we find the remote for the in-flight entertainment system, a universal power socket, as well as a USB port. In the rear compartment, the headphones are located. This seat also features one of these cozy mood light type of lamps. And this is one difference compared to the 787 from Lufthansa that took us to Montreal a few days earlier. The seat controls are down here, and we will look at them in detail when we turn the seat into a bed after the meal. On my right side, I have an armrest which is adjustable in height. It also has some storage space. Inside, I find the water bottle as well as the amenity kit. The panel also has a button for the overhead light, but it does nothing. I even had to ask the cabin crew and learned that you actually have to press the button on the remote, not on the panel here. Look at me getting tangled in the headphone cable. Professional flight reviewer Marcus Travels at your service. If you were unhappy with the temperature in the cabin, there's nothing you can do about it because there are no individual air vents at these seats. Once we're airborne, the service continues with hot towels. And these towels were the right temperature, which is not always the case with Lufthansa. We are getting ready for the first meal, but stay tuned for the second meal. It may not be what or where you would expect. The service continues with drinks. I got myself a Bloody Mary together with sparkling water and some cold nuts. The menus for today's flight were distributed already before takeoff. What's included is dinner after takeoff as well as a breakfast just before landing. Or you can choose the express meal service if you just want to go to sleep immediately. For the appetizer, I chose the crab roulette and crab with watermelon. It was served with garlic bread and a pretzel, as well as a salad with vinaigrette. All of this came served on a single tray together with salt and pepper. I only realized now in editing the video that I ended up also filming this other passenger's meal. I do like the privacy of this seat, and it looks like I chose the only angle where I can actually see anybody else. However, the camera was placed on the countertop, and it's very unlikely that you will have your head there ever. For my main course, I picked the sea bass with the lemon caper butter, red pepper, eggplant, 
roasted fennel and red onions served with polenta with herbs. Before the main course was served, they cleared away the tray, including the salt and pepper. And let's just say that this is the type of dish that would really have benefited from some extra seasoning. For my main course, I asked for a wine recommendation from the cabin crew. She just listed the three white wines that they have, but didn't actually recommend any of them that would pair particularly nicely with the fish. I asked for the Spanish white but it wasn't served at the right temperature. Now, she did pre-warn me about the wrong temperature, and she asked if I wanted an ice cube in it. I think this is really poor service. A simple wine recommendation is something that everybody working the business class cabin should be able to do. In addition, I know nothing about wine, but I'm pretty sure that you're not supposed to serve white wine with an ice cube. Do better, Lufthansa. For the dessert course, I picked the cheese platter. It came with cheddar, bleu de presse, and alp goat cheese, garnished with quince paste and dried prune. This first meal service ended with a box of chocolates which I took with me home. The whole first meal service, and particularly the main course, was incredibly bland, and polenta is bland by definition. The tastiest meal that I had was sadly the poutine in the Maple Leaf Lounge. Now let's have a closer look at the in-flight entertainment system on this 787 Dreamliner. The remote pops out like so. You can use the screen on the remote for flight information and the flight map. In addition, you can use the buttons and the D-pad to navigate the in-flight entertainment system. But one big limitation is that none of those buttons are hard-coded for play, pause or stop, for example. And, unlike many other airlines that use this model, you cannot use the remote as an independent separate screen. It will always just show you the flight map and flight information. The selection on the in-flight entertainment system is good. You have movies, TV shows, audiobook, podcasts, wellness applications, as well as a kids section. But the selection is not the same that we had on our Lufthansa flight to Montreal a few days earlier. On that flight, I started watching the first season of 30 Rock and I was looking forward to watching the remaining episodes on this flight, but there was no 30 Rock on this system at all. The system comes with noise-canceling headphones from AKG, and these are really good. They are comfortable and they feel really well made. They sit on the ear instead of over the ear, which is the design I prefer. One great benefit of this in-flight entertainment system is that Lufthansa does offer gate-to-gate IFE, which is not always the case with other carriers. Those other carriers would collect the headphones before landing so that you don't steal them, and I'm happy that Lufthansa does not do this. Now let's have a quick look at the lavatory and some of the main highlights. This loo features a flower in the dedicated vase, which is really nice. We have this magnifying mirror inside the big mirror. There is a sink, an overexposed sink, because filming in direct sunlight is not easy. We also have some extra amenities here in the business class bathroom. Mouthwash, earplugs, eye masks, and wet wipes. We also have a toilet with a touch-free flush sensor. And here we have an extra seat that folds out. If you look at the symbol, it's designed for tying your shoes. But I think this extra seat can come in handy for many other purposes as well. On the wall there is a baby change table, a sturdy handle, and then we have a full length mirror. On the door we have two coat hooks, as well as the mandatory cigarette disposal. My official favorite thing about this lavatory is, of course, the window. A loo with a view is always a great choice. But my second favorite thing is the signage. Of course, we have the obligatory don't smoke sign. But then there's this second sign here. I think this means don't use your phone in here. And I really don't understand why you wouldn't be allowed to use your phone in the loo. If you do know, please comment below. Lucky for me, though, I was filming this with my camera and not with my phone. Oops. But there are some opportunities for Lufthansa to improve the service as well. When I went in here before takeoff, both of these toilet rolls were closed. So I had to kind of tear it open with my finger. Some more premium airlines would have opened both of these rolls and turned the paper into a little point. 
Before we get ready for bed, let's check out the amenity kit from the studio. And I have a little surprise for you as well. This is the amenity kit from the flight to Montreal. Now it's unopened, so I don't know exactly what's in it, but I'm willing to give this one away to one of the viewers. On the front of the packaging, you can see the entire collection themed to different cities all over the world. And then on the reverse side, you can see that you can actually use this as a very clever carrying bag that folds down into a small space. This is a nice thing to bring with you on trips. And I actually have one of the previous models also from the Lufthansa business class trip, and I still use this one. So let me know in the comments, what would be a great way to give away this amenity kit? Should I raffle it off when I reach 1000 subscribers or 100,000 subscribers? Should I auction it off? Or should this be something for channel members only? Please put your thoughts in the comments and I will reply with a pinned comment once I've decided. Now let's put the seat on this Lufthansa 787 into bed mode. On the control panel, we have three different presets. We have the upright position, the relax mode, as well as the fully flat lie down bed position. From this angle, it may not look like it's fully flat. So let's try the view from the aisle instead. Here you can see that this is an almost completely flat sleeping surface. And it is in fact very comfortable. Lufthansa provides a blanket, the pillow that we talked about before, but they do not provide a mattress topper, unlike some more premium airlines. On this flight, I had a few good hours of sleep, but Nina was not able to sleep, unfortunately. And that will certainly have an impact on how we feel about the continuation of the journey. That's the video that I'm going to be linking to. Next, we're going to look at the breakfast. If you got value from this video, you can buy me a coffee with a link in the description or a super thanks right here on YouTube. Thank you for doing that. I woke up about one hour prior to landing, just as the cabin crew was ready to serve the breakfast. This is the strawberry yogurt, chia seed with maple syrup, garnished with strawberry and blueberry. But we still have one excellent part of this business class product to review on the ground, but also something that went horribly wrong. And the sad thing is that I was feeling quite good about this experience on the 787 until now. This flight to Frankfurt is almost at an end. We should be landing in about 25 minutes or so. So let's continue as we land at Frankfurt Airport. Lufthansa offers a unique experience at Frankfurt Airport, namely the Lufthansa Welcome Lounge. This is an arrival lounge, which you can access on arrival. These arrival lounges are not very common around the world, but I always appreciate when I have access to one. To get to the welcome lounge, exit the baggage claim area and walk towards arrivals area Bravo. The Lufthansa Welcome Lounge is only open to business class and first class passengers arriving on a Lufthansa long haul flight. In addition, some miles and more status passengers have access as well, but this is not a general Star Alliance Gold Lounge. For me, there are two important features of the Welcome Lounge. Number one is that they serve proper hot breakfast, and they even advertise it in the onboard menu. Number two is the showers. They in fact have more than 20 showers in here. They're all located downstairs. After you land from a long haul flight, having a shower is such a great experience, especially since we have an onward train trip coming up to Basel. Much better. Let's go back to the lounge. I definitely enjoyed the shower and the opportunity to change into fresh clothes. Other than the hot breakfast and the showers, this is certainly not the best lounge in the world by any means. And especially this one isn't in particularly good condition. They do have a PC workstation here, but it was out of service the entire time we were here. There is also a napping room, which could be a great asset, but it was also closed. I mentioned that Nina was not able to sleep on the plane, so this napping room would have been an excellent solution. Weirdly, there's also no power outlets at most of the tables in the lounge. And that includes these cafe tables and the more couchy type tables here in the back. The only electrical outlets that I could find were here at these bar tables. 
none of them had any USB power ports. And in 2023, that just isn't good enough, Lufthansa. Overall, this lounge is comfortable enough. We were here for a bit more than an hour before we planned to head to the train station, or so we thought. Here we are back in the welcome lounge for the second time, and this is not by choice. The ending of this trip was absolute misery. I'll tell you all about it from the studio. Lufthansa created an absolute mess for us as we were heading to collect our baggage. Click or tap the screen right here to watch the full video about this entire disaster. Thank you very much for watching Marcus Travels today and I will see you in the next video.